Hello everyone and welcome to Tune In. I'm your host Chris Holt and I'm really excited today to be here on location with a good friend of mine, singer, songwriter, producer, Cliff Hillis. Getting closer every night. Hey, Cliff, man, thanks for having me over to the Hacienda. Hey, thanks for coming over. Welcome to the Hacienda. Do I get a taco or a margarita? What's up, man? Yeah. Margaritas are usually in. All right, there. sweet, sweet. So, yeah, let's talk a little music life, man. You are busy. You are really busy. So tell me about your summer so far. Uh, it's been a little crazy. Um, since pretty much January, I've just been... I play with a bunch of different bands. I do my own thing. Um, do the yeah, you're touring thing. every week. I see your Facebook. You're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I've been more uh, places in a lot, since... The beginning of this year than I have in my life actually. <laughs> awesome. I was in New Zealand for a couple of weeks with this band, the Orchestra. Nice. Um, you know, featuring former members of ELO. Oh, and, sweet. Uh, yeah, it was really awesome. cool. And then um, did a tour with my friends US Rails in Europe for two months. And I'm doing shows. I play with Patty Smythe from yeah, Hanging Scandal. out with Patty Smythe, just a little of that. Yeah, right? just, yeah. just got done doing a, just a bunch of shows and we got more coming up. and. Plenty of things. Philly bands, the In the Pocket, Dave Osikinen from the yeah. Pro- Amazing musicians, love. man. Oh my Those God, guys yeah. are so good. So many great musicians. Uh, bands Smash Palace I now play with. Um, I've been Starbilly down in Baltimore, in which we have a new record come out, actually. Yeah. And, uh, and, and How do you have time for margaritas? <laughs> I know. Jesus, you know? you know? Yeah, I mean, seriously. We make time for the important nah, that's things. That's good. Yes, we do. So what do you think? If you could have a beer with any musician, dead or alive, who would it be? Um... I'd say maybe Harry Nilsson. I'm a huge fan of his. Although I'm afraid that would uh, turn into like too many beers. But <laughs> explain a little Harry Nilsson. Harry, what's that? Explain a little Harry Nilsson. Uh, amazing songwriter. He wrote "One Is the Loneliest Number." Um, so many songs, uh, and I inspired a lot of uh, other artists. I think. Your earliest influences. So we're all influenced by so many things over the life of our music career. But like, what are your earliest influences in music? Yeah, the Beatles. Nice. And actually, you know, I think the first record ever I got was I ever got was uh, Adam and the Ants. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of rather diverse. Like I used to love like kind of Devo and Adam and the Ants and things like that. But then Beatles and Beach Boys and everything. My brother was also a big uh, rock guy, and he was three years older. So Kiss and Cheap Trick. Nice. So yeah. Lots, lots oh, of seventies. Yeah. I had the Kiss movies. posters on my wall yeah. too. Yeah, I must admit, man. What's your favorite or most memorable live performance? You know, in recent history, I'd say. In recent times, I would say um, this past January with uh, the orchestra band nice. playing uh, in New Zealand, to seventeen thousand people wow. <laughs> walking out on stage, and it was in a massive uh, open space. It was amazing. That's intense, man. Yeah. yeah. And then any standout performance that you've done, you know, just overall in life. Overall in life, uh, playing with John Fay back in the day, we uh, we yeah. opened for Bon Jovi in oh. Atlantic City. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the Caulfields or no? That it was uh, John Fay. It was Ike. Ike. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, John Fay is another person we'll have here on the show. Oh, awesome. Sure. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for having me to Hacienda. Like, tell me about your studio. I know you're you're not only a very active musician, but you're a producer too. So tell yeah, me yeah. That. I mean, I kind of I've always had a studio going ever since I was a little kid, like a four track, and um, mostly for my own stuff and, and bands I'm involved in. But I do. A fair amount of projects here and there for singer-songwriters in the area, and I do a lot of mixing and mastering for people. And the cool thing is, in the modern world, people just send me tracks, and I mix, I ma- I mix them or master them or whatever. And so yeah, it boring. is amazing. Long gone are the days where you have to go to the big, expensive studio and do all the stuff. That's like yeah. you can have it right here on yeah. the desktop. You know, yeah, that's I great. Cut, cut drums in the basement. I have my little room here, make all kinds of rackets. So. And we've actually recorded some together. You've That's recorded right. some of my songs, so That's thank right. you. Yeah, oh, man. It's been great. Look forward to more. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Cliff, every artist has like their process, you know, and so when you're writing songs, are you like, do you get notions in the middle of the night or is it totally a little uh, I do. I, I do a lot. Uh, sometimes I've had some songs inspired by dreams, but uh, nice. a, a, a lot lately, actually, a funny the thing is, I, I generally hear music in my head, melodies, and I put it down and then I kind of came up with words later. And, and it changes, but that's usually the, the most, most common thing. For the last couple of years, I've been part of a songwriting group that's an email list, somebody's in charge of it, and they send out a lyric at the beginning of the week, and everybody on there has to write a song with that lyric in it by the end of the week. And usually it's Sunday at midnight, and so often my wife is asleep, and I'm here quietly writing my song, trying to get in by midnight. And the song Suicide Doors yeah. is about that, that from that experience, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. a number of them in the last couple of records I've put out. Like, uh, this Love Not War is one of the ones. 
uh, it, uh, XPN played a bit, and it was it was and that song came about literally from just my got to hand it in, and then I flesh it out and turn it into a, wow. a song. But it's been a great inspirational tool for me. It's really interesting. The industry today, oh my gosh. So we grew up in a time where you bought an album that had yeah. artwork and you yeah. listened to the whole thing front to back. Kids just download a song here and there today. What's it like being an artist trying to make a living? Yeah, it's, it's a funny world and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to go about it. But like I'm a big fan now, I put out EPs, generally like six songs, and then still people will pick and choose what they like. But sure. such a short attention span world. I, you know, I, I throw my music out there. I've, I've had a little bit of luck, I think, touring and you know selling merch is probably a good way for bands obviously yeah we're um, all t-shirt salesmen at the end yeah. of the day right? <laughs> <laughs> but um and i've had a little bit of luck over years with some song placements and some tv shows and movies and that's and it's hard because now that now the indie musicians have kind of cracked that nut so to speak obviously many bands get started just because of that they put out a song and people only know them because right yeah, like the so. volvo commercial or something exactly whatever. yeah yeah, yeah. When's like the first time you picked up an actual instrument? Um, I think it was, it was about nine years old. My brother is three years older, and he uh, kind of started playing guitar. I thought it was cool, so I started trying to play guitar. Played in the high school jazz band, sort of a like concert, or whatever. You know, you kind of played just funny songs. But uh, were you always guitar? Uh, well, I started the first many years. I played guitar, and uh, and then we had a band together when I was like 15 years old. That was the first time I started playing gigs. Um, and then later later on, I've, I actually play bass more than guitar these days with other bands. Uh, or just you know, either or. A little bit of keyboards, but just kind of a terrible drummer, but I love to play drums. <laughs> and tell me this, did your family, were you, did you come from a big musical family and everything like that? Um, not a huge musical family. Like um, my dad's side of the family, uh, music fans, but not uh, many musicians per se. But my mom was from Holland. She grew up in Holland and moved here when she was a teenager. And uh, actually, I have a great uncle, Theo Vanderpass, who was a, a rather famous classical uh, pianist in Holland and would, would play or tour around. And I believe Chopin was, uh, I hope I get that right, was what he was really uh, known for. Wow. Uh, my brother and I just made a trip to Holland, actually, a couple months ago to visit our two uncles that we have who are, are still alive. And it was great. I heard stories about him. And there's a plaque somewhere in this music hall where he used to perform. So. So that's, that was the most uh, inspiring uh, you know, uh, ancestor that I have. That's awesome. I think all fans are always interested in what musicians listen to. So what's in heavy rotation for you, you know, currently? I know that changes. But yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to um, stay up with this. There's so, lot, so much great music now. It's like almost hard to find, dig through all the, all the stuff. Um, I love the band Wilco. That's not really current, but I think you know, those 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 guys. I love most everything they do, sure. um, and they're actually old school band. I guess Sloan from Canada has a new record out, which I think is amazing. Um, and I always have Todd Rundgren and things like that floating around. Nice, Cliff. You know I'm not leaving the hacienda without jamming a song with you first. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. What song do you have in mind? How about uh, Better Than Myself, a song I wrote long ago when I was in a band called Starbelly, which I'm still in, actually. You're in like a hundred bands. <laughs> that, right? so, but seriously, and, and it was in a movie, correct? It was in a movie mm -hmm. called After Sex, starring Brooke Shields. It was the first song I ever got in a movie. And, uh, nice. I'm not going to vouch so much for the quality of the movie, but I felt like the soundtrack was great. All right. <laughs> and the key of D, I presume. Key of D, yeah. All right. Yes, well, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool.